Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Blonde BL-01. If you watched my previous video, I sort of scratched the surface of it, and I just wanted to talk about, you know, mainly the amp on that video. And uh, today we're going to kind of dive into the sound and everything else that people want to know. So first, this one came from the AK Audio Store, so thank you guys for sending this out. Um, there actually is another New Year sale, even though it's not quite New Year's, on AliExpress. So it's about $19.35, and I don't know what the sale price is going to be. I'm probably going to post those later, so um, do take note of the sale prices because we are in a sale period, and thank you guys for shipping that out to me. So Blonde BL-01, again, like the BL-03, a single dynamic driver. This one is not, uh, I can't remember what the 03 was, CNT or DLC, it was, it was coated with something. This one is a paper cellulose biological they have some fancy name for it but it's um, mostly a new driver and it's mostly paper or cellulose as they call it so first thing to know power so as i talked about um, in the previous video i highly recommend a powered source i'm using a q deluxe 5k it's a tiny bluetooth dac amp um, super nice i'm super happy with this one I actually like it a little better than my ES100. Uh, I think it, because I like a sort of a warmer sound, and I think the ES100 is a more neutral sound, so, but they're very similar. And uh, I highly recommend something with power. A dongle might get you there, but um, they tend to be not powered, so um, I would highly suggest some amplification of some sorts with the BL01. So yesterday someone said um, they just received their BL-01 and the fit was garbage. And uh, so I'm not going to say the fit is garbage, but I am, I'm sort of more picky about more horizontal oriented um, shells. And this one doesn't quite fit the bill. I actually like the O3 fit a little better. And I said that a couple places and I think I'm going to be in the minority on that, but um after seeing his comment, you know, maybe maybe that is a uh, not so far from the truth. But you know, you just have to be really careful with the the angle and make sure that this fits your ear more properly and it's angled right. And with a straight triangular typical shape, I think it just kind of locks in place easier. And this one, I tend to fidget with it and push it in to make sure it's in place. But um, so these are the the Asla Sedna fit, ear fits. This is the nice HCK Litz OCC cable. I'm super nice, super happy with it. I kind of spontaneously bought that because I had a coupon and I didn't really expect to be using it, but um, I happened to buy the 2.5 millimeter balanced version, which when I say it needs a little amplification, you get most amplification from the balance. So it all worked out really well for me, but the shells are a bit weightier and that's yet another thing i think i keep on fidgeting it because they're a little heavier and they tend to not pop out but they sort of lean outwards more than uh, i'm used to so um do take note of the fit and um i don't know i think uh, most people didn't like the fit on the 03 and uh so you'll probably have a better time with the 01 but um obviously there's a individual out there who didn't like the fit so do uh, fair warning do take note of that so watch your source warmth cable and tips. They, so if you remember the graphs on the O1, they turn the base down a little bit. So I would suggest not adding some of that base emphasis back into it since they took it out. And I think you'll end up with the clear mids. And um, unfortunately I don't have too many recommendations. I'm just, just generally watch your tips, especially the Sedna fits are these big open, and I think that works really well. But be careful about adding more narrow tips, which are going to add a little more base, a little more body. It doesn't necessarily need that. So is the Blonde BL05S better? Um, it's going to be better for the people who really like clean mids. If you really hate mid-base bleed, any kind of bleeding into the base, the 05S is probably going to be better. The O1 more follows the the O3. There's there's a nice amount of bleed into the mids, which gives you these really nice, natural, full, rich vocals. 
Um, but some people are, are just going to prefer the O5S. So it's not necessarily better, but it's going to come down to a preference for you. So what does the O1 sound like? It's still bassy like the O3, still very natural sounding like the O3, still musical, but now it's clear and I'll say it's taller. Soundstage wise changed a little bit and there's some really nice height to it. And I think it just changes, you know, it, you can you can always say, hey, it's very similar sounding to the O3, but there's these little parts to it which just make it sound better. And this taller soundstage is one of those for me. So bass, um, control is, is the one thing that you're going to really find kind of right off the bat. Um, the O3, that was probably the major complaint, was it's a bit boomy, too much bass. So the level came down a little bit, and there's way more control now. And you'll find that level of bass really, really tries to stay below the vocals. Um, it, and I do a really good job. I mean, I haven't really found another IAM that had so much bass, but enough control where it sounds really, really good without crushing the vocals or some other part of the song. So really nice control, better behaved. It's a bit faster, not, not crazy fast, just a bit faster to sound better so it doesn't hang around as long. So it decays a little faster so it's not hanging around as long. If you get my drift, it sounds a bit tighter. You get better definition out of that but it's still weighty. Um, there's just a really nice dynamic driver weight to the bass. And um, if you like that in the O3, you're going to like that on the O1 as well. So still fun, still fun like the O3, but I I'll call these wow moments. I mean, sometimes you're just listening to a song and you hear this small part and uh, you just kind of do a double take. You're like, wow, just wow. And uh, so that will happen quite a bit. And uh, not so much in the bass, but just general, if you're kind of a musical guy like me and you just like listening to tracks, um, it's going to pull you in to some details and you're just going to like, you know, blink for a second. Like, okay, let me rewind that for a second. So really nice. So you still have this mid bass sound that's not sharp, but it's deep. So drums don't necessarily have this super sharpness to them on the attack. Kind of like the O3, I had kind of the same complaint, but you have that back end weightiness to it, that thickness to it, which um, very nice. But if you're EDM fan, I have left enough EDM into my playlist. I know that it's not it's not the super sharpest sound. Um, if you're really into that, you'll probably think it's a little soft. But for normal people, um, it's very nice. So one of these wow moments, and the first one that kind of hit to me was teardrop by Avishai Cohen. If you know Teardrop, really famous song by Massive Attack. So he does a sort of trumpet version. And you get to this part at, at 140 where his trumpet trails off and you're just left with that drum and the presence of it. It just kind of freaked me out and I had to do a double take. And it was like, it was my first wow moment. And then you'll hear it again at 240. And I'm not saying that everyone's going to, you know, take note of this you'll probably think it's nothing but you will find these moments across your playlist and your tracks where you literally do a double take it sounds so good and um, the presence of it this little 4k bump that they put in to the 01 over the 03 um, you feel it right there so another bass problem that I had on um, especially on the KZ ASF and not so much the ASX, but to a lesser extent was Sam Smith's another one. So that really beginning part where his voice is kind of lower and his bassy and the two collide on the ASF because the bass wasn't quite as controlled and it was shamed. The level was a bit too much. Um, so take a look at that on the BL01 and just nice separation between his voice, nice texture between the two. Um, it was quite different than the ASF experience that I had, but it just goes to show that there's a lot of restraint on the BL0, even though it's a dynamic driver and it's, it has a lot of power to it. It has a lot of control to it as well. Oh, very nice. So the mids intimate is, is going to be the first thing that comes to your mind is how close the vocals are very intimate, very expressive and dynamic the same full natural vocals from the O3. Um, but now they're kind of mostly the same, but 
I'll still call them better and clearer. And a lot of this, I think, comes down to the, that 4K lift. If you are if you had the 4K at Lark like I did, you realize that this little 4K bump adds this centering, sharpness, fake details, whatever you want to call it, to especially the vocals. Um, but when you hear that against the bassy 01, really nice because it just adds a nice amount of detail and i think it does sound better than the 03 and i think a lot of it comes down to especially that upper mid region just lifted enough that you have this perfect balance between the upper mids and this thick weighty bass it's really really nice so i'll call it more details from the 4k you can call it fake details whatever you want to call it but not overly clean like the O5S. So still some bleed there, still a thick vocal, a full rich vocal, but not um, a lean, too lean vocal like the O5S. So some examples, and uh, I kind of go back to, especially on the O3, this deeper, smoky female voice sound just sounds amazing on, even on the O3, but on the O1, it sounds even better. So Diana Krall's Body and Soul is a great one. Brandy Carlisle's The Joke is a great one. Johnny Cash, Hurt, if you want to hear sort of this expressive, because he sang this as as an older, it wasn't all that long ago, and he has this older voice, so it's a male, slightly deeper voice, but there's a wavering to it, showing his age. Really, really nice. So that beginning is really, really good. Adele's Hello, definitely a super nice version on the 01. Um, and then Head Over Heels, Japanese Breakfast, you'll get a sense of this presence again. Um, there's just almost a little brightness and intimacy to those vocals on Head Over Heels by Japanese Breakfast that you don't hear on other IAMs. So really nice. I haven't listened to that song in a while, but I was sort of blown away. It was another one of those where I just kind of took a double take at how present that voice was. Tori Amos, Cornflake Girl, another great one. Not so smoky and deep, but... Um, at the higher end, so really nice. A few progressive rock kind of guys. Judith, The Perfect Circle. Those, his voice right in the beginning where it's kind of closer and more intimate, really good. So Marilyn Manson, Cry Little Sister, same exact thing. His voice, that intimate vocal, expressive and dynamic and full, um, really, really nice. So Trouble is the most similar part to the O3. Still rolled off. Um, Go Go Penguin, Signal in the Noise, song that I used on the Lark. Um, listen for the cymbals. They're quite low. Other cymbals seem to be fine. I think it's a level thing. They just roll off a little early. So the lower it is in the mix, the more harder it is to find on playback. But I'll still call it polite, and it doesn't have that BA intensity that some people will desire. But... Um, I don't have a necessarily complaint because I'm not a huge treble head. So as long as I could hear cymbals, I'm pretty good with it. And I don't think the treble is outside of this upper mid part where it was bumped a little. I don't really think that it's a whole lot different than the O3. So staging, as I said, you get the BL03 BL width, but now there's a height to it. And a song like I Can See Clearly Now by the Holly Cole Trio, listen to her voice. It's slightly elevated on the sound stage. The bass is now below. And then later, the piano comes into the sides. And you just end up with this big open space. Her voice is intimate and close and expressive. The bass is nice and controlled, popping. And then the piano comes in. And if you're a sharp piano guy, you'll think, oh, it's a little bit soft, like I said but not bad. But more importantly, you just have this big open space and it sounds great. And I think even that is just a little better than, or quite better than the BL-03, which is a little bit more linear. It was nice and wide, but didn't necessarily have the height. And I think with the 01, you get some of the height back and um, it's actually a much better experience. And it, and it helps out with instrument location and separation and layering, all these things that are helped along by having a big spacious space. I think the 01 succeeded in that area of just giving you a little bit more than what the 03 did. So not to mention the mids are just a little cleaner because you don't have as much bleed or that bass level. So you don't have that congestion. 
And now you throw in this openness of space and the whole thing just sounds a little bit cleaner and better and uh, I really like it. So that's my take on the Blonde BL01. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next time.